Hey, good evening. Thanks for joining us. Ask yourself this question tonight. What do you suppose would happen if you went into work one day after posting a video depicting yourself murdering a coworker and brandishing a sword at the company's CEO? Now, most of us know the answer. We'd be fired, maybe reported to the authorities, possibly even arrested, prosecuted. Sadly, too many workplaces have seen too many acts of deadly violence to do otherwise, except apparently this one. You're looking at it. And it's not like it hasn't been the focal point of rage and violence before. It's not like the men and women who serve here haven't just had a very recent lesson in what happens when lies and violent conspiracy theories and outright threats go unanswered. Yet not only is one of the two parties here, with rare exceptions, singularly uninterested in even looking into such things, we know tonight it doesn't matter if the bad act in question comes from someone they actually work with. Arizona Congressman Paul Go Gosar is his name. Here's a, or just a brief portion, the only one we'll show, of the anime he recently posted on Twitter and Instagram depicting him killing Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez with a sword and then swinging two swords at President Biden. So that's part of it. The congressman's animated fantasy of murdering a fellow member of Congress and menacing the president. And this is the congressman's sister, Jennifer, talking about her brother. And that, this is something that I have to openly wonder, does he have to act on it himself before we believe that he is an absolute, he's a sociopath, where he is the accountability. Now, as to her question, the White House condemned the video. House Speaker Pelosi said, quote, threats of violence against members of Congress and the president of the United States must not be tolerated. And House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, guess what he said? Nothing. We invited him on the program as well, but we heard nothing back. Congressman Gosar, who we also invited on tonight, tweeted out a cartoon response earlier today, the message saying, it's a cartoon, relax. Then later, he put out a statement which says in part that the anime, quote, depicts the symbolic nature of a battle between lawful and unlawful policies and in no way intended to be a target attack against Representative Cortez or Mr. Biden, which doesn't even make sense because that is what it is. It's a targeted attack. It's not open to interpretation. Yes, it's an anime. Perhaps the richest sentence, though, in this one, quoting again, a chaotic and lawless wind is blowing across our land. He's not wrong about that one. Just listen to a pair of hate-filled voicemails, two of, them, two of many that Michigan Republican Congressman Fred Upton has been getting receiving, has, has been getting recently. Now, before you do, just consider this. They're not about abortion or race or immigration or mask wearing or schools, vaccine mandates or anything really controversial. The outpouring we're going to play, the vitriol, is about his vote on a bipartisan bill on infrastructure. Traitor. That's what you are. You're a piece of traitor. I hope you die. I hope everybody in your family dies. You piece of trash mother. Voted for dumbass. You're stupider than he is. He can't even complete a sentence. You dumb mother. Traitor. Piece of mother. Piece of trash. Hope you die. I hope your family dies. Hope everybody in your staff dies. You piece of traitor. Just to say your days are numbered, you're a dumb So those threats, which again, we should point out, are about roads and bridges, and a bill that, by the way, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, the top Senate Republican, is now crisscrossing his state boasting about. So that's where we are today. That's where the crazy is, too. The threats, by the way, follow the postings online of another member of Congress, Marjorie Taylor Greene. She tweeted out the names of the Republican House members who voted for the bipartisan infrastructure bill, writing, quote, these are the 13 Republicans who handed over their voting cards to Nancy Pelosi to pass Joe Biden's communist takeover of America via so-called infrastructure. <sighs> In a separate tweet, which we're not showing you, she posted their phone numbers. Now, the Congresswoman, as you know, is a big believer in the lie, or the big lie, or at least she claims to be. She's compared mass mandates to the Nazi persecution of Jews and the Holocaust. She's flirted with the anti-Semitic conspiracy uh, fraud QAnon. She's not the one facing discipline, though, from her party for exposing her fellow Republicans to hate and perhaps even to harm. And so far, Congressman Gosar isn't being even mildly reprimanded by his party leadership for his threats. 
Instead, to read from a headline in today's Washington Post, and I quote, GOP floats punishment for its 13 apostates. So in other words, the 13 Republicans who voted on the same bill, 19 Senate Republicans, including Mitch McConnell, also support it. Those are the ones the Republicans are going after. The piece goes on to report that some party members want to strip these 13 Republicans of committee assignments and quotes former Trump chief of staff Mark Meadows today endorsing the notion. The same Mark Meadows, of course, who's been served with a subpoena to testify about what he know, knew about the coup attempt. The same Mark Meadows used to be, you know, the big leaker guy. We'll have more on, on that story shortly because 10 more of those dropped late today. But if you're wondering why it's suddenly a sin to support roads and bridges in your district, but no big deal to post unhinged murder fantasy videos about coworkers and a sitting president, you might want to at least acknowledge the role his old boss is playing in the current climate, something Congresswoman Liz Cheney addressed head on this afternoon. We are also confronting a domestic threat that we've never faced before. A former president who's attempting to unravel the foundations of our constitutional republic, aided by political leaders who have made themselves willing hostages to this dangerous and irrational man. So she, as you know, is also being targeted with hate mail and threats and political retribution, along with fellow Republican Adam Kinzinger. Their offense, of course, is wanting to get to the bottom of what happened on January 6th. That's it. That, too, is now considered a sin in the GOP, which only enables more misbehavior, more winking and nodding and violent threats, and ultimately sets the stage, potentially, for more violent eruptions like we saw at the Capitol.